What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic alongside with my buddy, Ben Raza. We are talking underdog, and we are talking the albatross, the long drive and the warm-up. And what are these? This is best ball for the four major championships in the PGA this season. Ben, how you doing, my dude? I'm doing good. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to be honest right here. I didn't know this existed until pretty recently. I have a feeling a lot of people don't. And when you see this format... I'm actually really, really excited to do some drafts and talk some underdog because the four majors with best ball, I think, is an absolutely awesome format. So we're going to be talking through this a little bit. I just jumped into a $10 $10 Albatross draft. This has 200 k to first. This is a gigantic prize pool. They're going to go buy your pods. You have six people that you're going to be drafting alongside. We're picking 10 golfers, and we want to be picking the best possible players at every single major championship. Yes, we do. So we're going to Augusta National first, where Rory McIlroy, hopefully he falls to us. I'd be okay with that. He's the uh, guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that would be auto-click. If uh, Loch Ness Monster 28 would like to skip that one, I'd be all I right with it. The one, piece of the, <laughs> the one piece of the uh, of the major championship puzzle that Rory McIlroy has yet to accomplish, it would achieve the career Grand Slam for him if he could get it done this year, 2023, at Augusta National. But... Oh, look at that. We're already running so, so good. I'm going to jump back here, though, for one second and show a little bit about what the rules are as we get into this. The Albatross is a really great format, and this is kind of the major thing that we need to be taking a look at. You're drafting for 10 rounds. Round one, you have six people who get through it. Round two, it then goes to 12. Round three is then 12, and then round four yeah, you're going to have a lot of overlap with some of the players, but those last players you draft, Ben, they're really going to matter in that final round at the Open Championship. Yeah, so step one, you got to beat six people in your first pod. Then, as as you just talked about, 12, and I believe, uh, don't quote me, but I'm, I'm fairly certain in the next two, two out of 12 go through. So you don't have to win solely out of your 12, but you got to be in the top two And as we move through the majors. So what we're going to figure out here, and again, we're doing this on the fly. We are live here. <laughs> I wanted to ask you this guy like Cam Smith, like weird. What are we going to do with the live guys? Or do you want to go very conservative with like a Jordan Spieth or a Will Z or a Hovland who we know are going to be in all these events? Yeah, I'm going to start Jordan Spieth here for a hot second. He's not usually my favorite. Fino might actually be my Don't favorite he? out of everybody there. I think he sets up well for Augusta. They changed 13 okay. a little bit. How do you feel about Fino? Let's go. Let's, let's go with we'll worry, Fino. We'll we worry got about the really lucky to get Rory uh, where we did. I think I'm okay going back and getting some Tony Fee now. But you bring up an interesting point with Cam Smith and some of these live guys. We have Cam Smith, my boy, Louis Wustazen. You break my heart, Louis. You break my heart. Mm. But we got to be considering some of them here. I think Dustin Johnson is by far the best in form. But Cam Smith had did not play well at the Mayakoba, did not play well in Tucson. There are only two events in to live. Yeah, I've been paying attention this time around because it matters for the majors. But I have to give them a huge downgrade, don't you? Oh, I definitely give them a downgrade. But, you know, when we get deep into this, there's going to be a lot of game theory. It's it's how much everyone's going to be focused on Augusta, obviously, because you got to get out of that first group of six. But once you do that, who are the golfers that may not even be there that are going to be pertinent? What are the live guys in terms of status? And then who are those sleeper picks uh, that maybe can flash in one of the majors that could pay dividends at the PGA, that could pay dividends at the Open Championship? I think that's what we're going to find out after I assume you're just going to take Sam Burns and ruin the draft soon enough, but <laughs> I see his name. Yeah, no, honestly, no. I think this is where we probably could go to the Dustin Johnson or, I mean, Matt Fitzpatrick, I'm worried about his injury. I'm legitimately worried. Hideki, we have the match play going on right now. Only the top 50 get into Augusta, but Hideki, it, knowing that he him. has a green jacket, uh, he will be playing there regardless. So, I mean, Hovland fell all the way to us, though. We have to kind of go there, right? Yeah, so Hovland, obviously, different ilk in the sense he's looking for the breakthrough against guys that have majors, but Hovland's going to be in all four. Form is good. And I like we're kind of correlating. We've got three off-the-team mashers so far. Finau, Rory, Hovland. That's a good little little way to correlate. Yeah, something that you talk all the time about on DFS shows is uh, making sure you get the same similar type players into your event or into your lineups so that you, if the golf course plays a certain way, you're set to yeah. go. Augusta is long. Augusta, regardless of what you want to say about it being wide open, it, it is wider and more uh, 
forgiving off the tee, not super penal rough, but you get an opportunity to just get some mashers out there and get it moving there, especially with some of the length added to a hole like number 13. You get 14, uh, which can play longer depending on the wind direction. Of course, 17, 18 coming down the stretch. Always helps to now have uh, have a little exposure to some of those mashers. Yeah, I mean, say what you want, and I could say plenty about Bryson. Uh, but there were <laughs> there were some elements that he showed, not even at Augusta, but even at the o, you know the U.S. Open. Like when you can do some of those things off the tee, there are major opportunities. Uh, it's going to get interesting quickly, though. You know, the first couple rounds I think are kind of autopilot. You're just choosing amongst elite players it starts to thin out pretty quickly i mean we're already down to don't you dare star him um <laughs> i was waiting for yeah it. i'm watching don't think i'm not paying attention <laughs> we're taking a decky i think this is where i think it's kind of an educated risk he just withdrew the match play we're still two weeks away from the masters he's not going to play the valero texas open he's going to take care of himself whatever this neck injury is that he has going he's had injuries in the past and you know what happened the last time he had an injury going into augusta national he won the event. And again, keep in mind, obviously with this format, yes, you're going to need six golfers to do some heavy lifting at Augusta. Say Decky, I'm not saying this is true, but say he's not healthy for Augusta. Okay. We put him on the shelf. He could pay, you know, what about in August when he is healthy? Like it's not all about all our guys contributing immediately. So I, I feel good about him as a boom bust, even if he's not in form heading into the first major of the year. Yeah, so we have Oak Hill as the venue for the PGA Championship. We have LA Country Club, yeah. which is a venue that nobody's ever seen. Uh, even myself, being out in Los yeah, Angeles, Max California. Homer, it's the, Max Homa has the course record out there, I believe. 61 that he shot at the uh, at the Pac-12 Championship. Yeah, I did my research. It's a disgusting thing, but it is what it is. Max Homa has a ton of familiarity playing out there. He played at UCLA. Well, not at UCLA. Um, Max Albert. Homa. Yeah, did he play at UCLA? Where did Homa play? I thought he was from. I thought he was in the Morikawa bucket with Cal, but I could be wrong. I think he might have been, but I just know that he played in the Pac-12 Championship at LA Country Club and set the thing on fire. But we want to start thinking about some of these golf course types and what it's going to look like, and that's where I kind of want to jump to the Open Championship and discuss just a little bit about what you're facing there because you do get so many question marks about the draw and what it's going to look like and weather and things like that. We can't predict any of that, but what Ooh. we can predict is out of 260 people who we want to have. And now we got to get on the clock here quick for what? a quick one. Keegan, I'm going to start quick. See who's had pretty good form. Kepka, I don't want to touch with a 10 no. foot pole. Your boy, Ricky down there. Let's go Keegan. Okay. I think Keegan goes with our masher types yep. that we have so far. I think it's just kind of a skill set that we're building our beginning players with, and we can start to deviate a little bit there. Surprised to see Bryson getting as much love as he is, considering he hasn't finished in the top 40 of a 48-person live event this year. Uh, the guy that I actually want to dig, dig into a little bit, I know he hasn't shown a ton, but I think Adam Scott is closer than maybe some people think. You know, he showed some flashes during the Florida swing. Obviously, at, at, the, at this stage in his career, it's, you know, he wants to win majors. He wants to see if he can add another one. Um, now, is he going to get back to us? I don't know. Uh Maybe, maybe people will take, I hope he takes, I think Brooke. it's a click. I think it's an auto click. Yeah. Brooks Kepka, another guy, no form live tour. I got to feel like these guys are going to be fighting an uphill battle too. They haven't exactly played the most difficult courses. I mean, Mayakoba is a resort course. Uh, I know that they played big events there in the PGA tour once upon a time, but that live course, not really much of anything. Tucson, another golf course doesn't present much of a challenge. And none of these guys have really put up anything. That makes me feel very confident about it. Now we just auto-click Adam Scott, correct? Yeah, I feel good about him. Again, he's a guy, ton of experience. Some of these courses where we don't really know what we're going to see, uh, like the Open. We don't know if it's going to be a hurricane. We kind of have to plan for some of that on this team. And I think a guy like Scott checks a lot of boxes. Well, basing what we did, uh, 2023, the Open Championship is going to be played at Royal Liverpool. Do you know who won at Royal Liverpool, the last time it was hosted there. Tom Our guy, Morris. Rory McElroy. Oh, Rory. That was Our quite dude. a while ago then. It was. 2014 last time. They usually have a rotation that's just short of 10 years. Pretty close to what the Open Ch or the US Open has, excuse me, as well. Uh, RNA kind of runs that one and, and does a great job. But 
In terms of game theory here on Underdog, make sure you use promo code Stochastic. Make sure you take advantage of that free money. And then there's a $3 uh, event to get into here, but we have our next pick on the board. We have 20 seconds left. Look at me go. Where are we thinking next? Ooh, Tiger. Uh, I would I would say we go with either Keith Mitchell. Yeah, Kill a Keith has been on yeah. fire this year. I know we've been taking a lot of best available, but I'm surprised people don't want to be clicking on Keith Mitchell before like Bryson DeChambeau. Yeah, I mean... There's still, I, I think sometimes in these drafts, and and listen, we're going to learn. We're going to be doing this, by the way, leading all the way up to Augusta. So this isn't the, first, the last one you're going to see of us. But to me, I'm more content with like, I'll figure it out at the end. I'm not going to hero in the middle of my draft. I like what we're doing. We've got a lot of opportunities. We're, met, we're mixing in some of these iron specialists. A couple guys at the back end can differentiate to me. I don't think we needed to get crazy and take a Taylor Montgomery, for example, right right here when we could take someone like Keith Mitchell. Completely, completely agree. And if we're going to go to some live players, I don't hate some of these back end live players who are still uh, not. Yeah, go ahead. Thomas Peters is who I was looking in on, but uh, where are we thinking here now? Uh, definitely don't make me take Taylor Montgomery. No. I'll be so sad. Woodland, about, that's scary. What about Patrick Reed? Oh, I hate it, but I'm doing okay. it. I'm here. It. I'm here for it. Our first live guy goes off the board, and it's uh, former Captain America. Now he's kind of like Captain Antichrist, I think. Yeah, might be yeah part Captain of it. Saudi Arabia. Um, <laughs> there it is. I, I, listen, Reed, talk about boom bust. Is it really crazy to think that he could he could win one major this year? Like the guy, say what you, again, he's another one. Say what you want about him, and I could say plenty. It's still a damn good golfer when he's in form. I don't know if he's going to be in form. That's a big question. Yeah, I'm going to be jumping in a lot more of these drafts. Uh, contrary to balance, I was balance shame before this program began, but such is life. I will live because, again, I'm going to be firing a bunch into this. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you it want to join, overlay too. it's going to it could definitely overlay. There's definitely a chance the three dollar will probably fill, but the ten dollar and the two hundred and fifty dollar use promo code Stochastic, get a hundred dollars first match deposit bonus up to a hundred dollars and start taking advantage of some of these drafts. Try out the $3. See kind of where certain players are landing, where they're going to go on the turn. But now, we are now into the later stages. Just two rounds to go. We are going to fly through these. It's going to happen fast, so we got to be smart about this. Your boy, Mito Pereira. Are we going to go back-to-back -back live, guys? So I would, I would love to get Gary Woodland. I don't think he's going to last. Find what out. What do you say, Bez? I mean, wasn't Usti down here? Is he even eligible for some of these? Yeah, he well, he'll definitely be eligible for Augusta, right? Yeah, I mean, that's something, again, that can get very there difficult with these live guys. Gary Woodland still on the board. Oh, so we're going to do that. I think, you know, Gary Woodland, talk, he fought through some injuries. He's shown flashes. The putter has been ice cold at times. Another guy, though, so this four or five times and has only been like eight rounds. Gary Woodland's got a major, and he, he's flashed that he can do it on the biggest stage. I, I, that's where I would go. U.S. Open's coming back to California. He won at Pebble Beach once upon a time. I was there. It was an enjoyable experience. Uh, hit Stinger two irons like it was his, nobody's business. L.A. Country Club plays a little bit like that, from my understanding. A lot of forced carry spots mm -hmm. like you're running into at Pebble Beach. You have canyons that show up out of nowhere. You have tree-lined areas where you got to just get the ball in the fairway by any means. And oh, not necessarily a bomber course. But last player on the board, I, I have Louis Stard. Are we doing this? We got to for the kids. He's farming right now, though, more than golfing. Fine, take Bez. Yeah, Bez did real good for me in the match play. Good job, fella. Um, <laughs> we should pick a South Africa. I mean, I, I think this is where you got to really look towards kind of, you know, you know, he's like not going to probably contribute in all four, but can he contribute and help you win one round? I agree. And also the major championship pedigree. He's been there. He's won Comes in second in every major. Yeah, he's he's truly going to put himself in positions sometimes. Uh, he just has pretty much every year for the last however long he's been in contention at a major or majors. So I definitely like that as a last guy in somebody that nobody's really going to be talking about. But anybody on the board that you're surprised isn't getting picked. 
You know, again, I, I think that I thought maybe there would be some like Bobby Mack is a good example. Some of these guys that we don't see too often uh, that ha- are either showing a lot of talent or flash in majors. Justin Sue for for different reasons. You know, he's someone that's starting to really put it together on the PGA Tour. And then you guys like this, I'll be honest, kind of afterthoughts for me. Daniel Berger is not healthy. We haven't seen him. Leishman and Casey I haven't seen them for various region, reasons. Of course, all these live guys. I don't think that it's that necessary to get crazy. I liked this team. We're, we may be eliminated immediately, but man, I feel good about top to bottom. So that is my very first draft under uh, at the Albatross, the $10 I feel good about the work that we just put in. Rory McIlroy, Tony Finau, getting Rory McIlroy a pick four, that's a steal. Victor Hovland, Hideki Matsuyama, that's some upside later in the later in the day too. Keegan Bradley, Adam Scott, Keith Mitchell, Patrick Reed, Gary Woodland, and Louis Wusthazen. Any reactions to this team? I mean, and I listen, I understand why it's like this because it's reality. But when I just look at this on face value, if you did this draft, a year or two, like it would be comical to think that you could get all these guys. And I know some stuff has changed, but like just to look to see the bottom half of our draft, Adam Scott, Patrick Reed, Gary Woodland, Louis Oosthuizen. I I know they're not all the same player for various reasons, but I, I'm actually really encouraged by that because I feel super confident with the guys up top. And in this format, I wouldn't be uh, surprised if one of those guys competes at one of the four majors this year. All right, last question, then Uh-oh. we'll get out of here. If you had to add one player that wasn't a top 10 player in the world to this team, who would it be? So when I look at this team, I, I mean, again, it's, are you trying to add more bombers? I think we kind of have that covered, to be honest. To me, I would be looking more towards the Jordan Spieth type Mm -hmm. of player a really good around the green player a really good putter so he kind of came to my mind you know if you want to debate where he's at in in the world rankings even a guy like you know an irons Corey connors an iron specialist some of those uh, things that we didn't have time to address a ton that's really where if i could add a guy i'd like to bolster that because i don't think there's any debating i put our team off the tee up against any team in this entire tournament Yeah, hopefully that's the major requirement for every single major this year. That's what we're looking for. Uh, Let's grow the rough out at Augusta. That sounds like fun to me. Let's uh, let's let's add some extra fescue over at Royal Liverpool. That's for sure. But the albatross, the long drive, the warm up. Ben, you want to do one more of these? Sure. Let's do one more again, because there's so many different ways that we can kind of navigate this. I'm interested to see. What's going to be a little, what's going to be different about this team? Can we get a, a different kind of blend? Cause we were driver heavy the first time. Yeah. I think that uh, this is going to be something, something that we want to be adding into it. There we are. I'm back. I'm ready to go for another one of these. We'll wait for it to fill here, but some of the things that we learned, we can definitely get some value huh, just strictly off of ADP. I guess people are trying to get different builds. You're in your pot of six. You want to have exposure to different players, but I really like what you said about skill set, where we were very, very driver heavy. I think just maybe focusing a little bit more on iron play, wedges, putting it, finding some exposure to just a huge stack of that. Of course, some kind of a mixture is going to be what shows up at the top of leaderboards, but it all matters about what ends up happening at that open championship. And if it plays really, really miserable, I want those chippers. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Again, and I, part of it, it's always a fine line from DFS to underdog to any format. I don't want to say to myself, no matter what, I'm taking putting special. And then I don't have the right person. You got to choose best available sometimes. But I don't think it's crazy to say, wow, this team, we've got some of the best iron players in the world now. Let's see if we say maybe that becomes the focal point of of a predominant major and it's we got the best of it. And I, I really like that strategy. We'll see what we can get here. I mean, these guys at the top, I also don't think fit into skill sets. That's something we've talked about. Like John Rahm is just good. He's not a he's not Cam Champ who's kind of an off the tee specialist. John Rahm is just an all around absolute monster. So, uh, I think it's a little different when you're talking about your first player versus say your 7th round player. John Rahm playing at the Mexico Open. That's not very nice. What's going to go torch them? 
Yeah, he'll be minus them. minus 175 in the outright <laughs> market. It'll be lovely. And then he'll win. <laughs> then he'll win, like he did last time when I bet against him with Cameron Champ, who I believe finished second at that Mexico Open. Yeah, it's it, some of what he's done early in the season has just been ridiculous. Let's have this conversation. If we have to take a number one, if you had to pick between Rom or Scheffler right now, we've seen ridiculous form from both of them. Rom winning everything, Scheffler coming off of winning his first players, as well as the Phoenix Open, which he's now won back to back seasons. Who do you prefer? I prefer Rom. I do. Okay. I think that even though, uh, you know, again, these guys all have elite resumes. I think Rom is certainly looking to add more of the top tier to his game is just at a different level and it seems that he's been able to control him and Scheffler are very different types of people not to play psychologist but like Rom Rom sometimes everyone brings the the emotional aspect into it but it seems like he's really learning how to grind through some of that and I I'm a big Rom fan I think he's going to have a huge year in majors not just a huge year uh early in the season all right we have one more person one more person and then we're going to be starting up this draft uh, come on, jump on in. The water's warm. It's it's beautiful here. That's for sure. But looking at this top end, uh, I was just going through a little bit of, of players that I thought might be a tiny bit undervalued. I'm a little bit surprised to see Xander and Justin Thomas above Max Homer right now, which is something I did not expect to say in 2023. That's for sure. But I understand Justin Thomas has the major and, and Homer doesn't. But I mean, Homer's played flat out better for about six months. I mean, Max Homa has taken it to another level. Max Homa's, oh, West Coast swing. He dominates. What does he do elsewhere? Well, he's carrying. I've been so impressed with him, not even in California this year, just elsewhere. So uh, what do we got? We got the third pick? Is that where, so is that where? I want to I want to get a little weird here because we have uh -oh. Rory and we if we don't get if we get Rahm or Scheffler, we're taking Rahm or Scheffler. Okay? Yeah. But we have the third pick and we just took Rory ahead of time. I was just kind of eyeing this Cantley Homa combination at the turn. Because again, I think if we take one, we're probably also going to get the other. Maybe probably. not. Probably. I'm close. interested, first of all, I think we, we do have to see right off the bat, and we're about to find out in three seconds, is it going to be Ram and Scheffler? Because if one of those two are not off the board, I think you have to take them at three. Agreed. Unless you're being very contrarian, so Rom is off the board. <laughs> that was automatic. That was fast. That was the that was the fastest pick of all time. And NH pain don't cause us great pain. You know you you know you want Rory this time, even though we were begging for Rory last time. I mean, yeah, it, uh, this is why. Just for the record, for everyone watching, this is why I'm not allowed to do the shows on my own <laughs> because every draft I would take Rory, and it wouldn't make for good content. So. Uh, we could take Rory. Here's the thing. I'm happy to to just thread him throughout. Of course, we had to wait for the whole clock for Scheffler to get taken. Do you want to do it? Or do we want to get really, really contrarian here and try to hope that out of these top three, somebody falls by the wayside? So I like the concept of kind of mixing it up here. I, I can I can be a mix it up. Let's go with Cantley and see. Let's try to roll the dice and see if we can get Homa. In the second okay. round. I, I think so too. Obviously, Morikawa being your iron specialist. Xander, I do not like what we've seen in terms of form out of him of late. Justin Thomas, the same thing. The putter has just been ice, ice, baby. Not this guy ideal. in fourth is living the dream. Gets Rory. Well, Lucky's. that was us getting Rory yeah, I know. fifth last we were, draft. I was living the dream just 10 minutes ago. <laughs> now my life is in shambles. It's how quickly it can turn in these drafts. Yeah, that's usually what happens when you work with me. Uh, Max yeah, Homa goes sixth, like he should. Uh, goes wow. above Justin Thomas. Here's the thing. If Justin Thomas were to fall to 10th, I'm absolutely taking Justin Thomas. Um, but I think this is where we have to have the uh, Jordan Spieth or Will Zalatoris uh, conversation. Man, it's amazing. Oh, God, I love our last team. We had Hovland and Finau and Rory. We did. It was incredible. And now I'm making you just like go back on everything you believe in no but this is good this is real good because it looks like we're going to be able to get to me we, we would be choosing i mean i wanted more a cow more but i i think getting speed to fall to us in the second round is pretty interesting yep Do i'm you? predicting the future yeah especially again open championships he's he's kind of built for that he's yeah. he's just creative 
goes out there, doesn't really care. It's Texas-like in nature. There's no grass, just out there slinging it. I don't know. I kind of enjoy it here specifically. And again, uh, he's, uh, we're looking at, at like the Open Championship the most because that's where you win all the big money. Um, I think that that's kind of a, a little bit of a priority, but you got to get there. It's not like we're going to survive Spieth playing poorly and, you know, our top two guys playing poorly here. You're taking your top six scores uh, every single major. So, yeah, you can get saved by maybe one tournament. But when it comes down to it, hard to believe that if Cantley and Spieth play poorly, they were just not out immediately. Yeah, and again, I mean, I know Spieth and the Open Championship and stuff, it wasn't that long ago. I mean, it's been a while, but still, like, the guy used to be the... uh you know, the Augusta whisperer, if it wasn't for a couple water balls, how crazy would that resume look? Um, Speaking of water balls at the Honda Classic, Sung JM sitting there. I think this is another one of your boys, so to speak. Uh, I think yeah. he pairs nicely as just an all around player. You know, we've seen Speeth start to get some of the ball striking pedigree. Cantley, kind of an all around player. Yeah. None of them really bombers, but Sung JM, I can get behind here. Sung JM, you know, if you look at the strokes gain data, he does not gain as many strokes in any category as some of like the crazy specialists, but he also has no weakness. He gains everywhere. And that is such a asset for major championships when you need a full, you know, what do they all say? It's a full test of golf. Every club in your bag. Sanjay's that type of player. I love him in this format and I like him for this team. Yep. I think he's a great fit for what we've got going here. So now as we go over to our side here, can't lay speed. Sung JM, I think that's a pretty nice start. And again, getting contrarian with that third pick with Cantlay. Yeah, but we changed it up. If Rom, if you're looking at those Rom and Rory teams, when you get to the very end of it, and we just have a little bit of a mixed up construction where Cantlay and Spieth and M find their way to the top, that is how you rake in a nice 200K payday, 100K yeah. payday, excuse me. You're going to have to do something, you know, a little contrarian at, at the bottom because there's going to, listen, realistically every major just look at the seasons there's always a handful of guys that hit the first page on the leaderboard in a couple and you're just like what uh and obviously we don't need to reach too crazy for them but as we get deeper in this draft i'm interested to see where the live guys just like the last draft where they come out and who we can see possibly fall to us here i mean we're only uh three players in and already some of the big names are are still still on the board yeah, Hideki just went in front of us, which is kind of a bummer. How about the Jason Day resurgence and your boy Tommy Fleet? Tommy. I think this is a tough one between the two, but you prefer Tommy? I do. I okay. think that, again, just it's close. I think most people would prefer Jason Day because most people are smart. Uh, I'm <laughs> going to say well, Tommy's starting to show flat. I know we're still searching for an elusive win, but not everybody on your team needs to do that. Sometimes they just need to be that fifth or sixth guy who's going to count for points. And he can do that in a couple majors for you. He's, he's got a great major history, despite some of the frustration points. As that blurb just taught us, he played well at the Valspar. And that means everybody. not well enough, not well enough, fell off at the end. You needed to cash that ticket, but such is life. We at least can get him for a lower value than had he won that golf tournament. So there's that. There is that. God, I would love to see Neiman fall to us. That would be pretty awesome. He's probably, again, these younger live players, him, Mito Pereira, uh, Cameron Smith, eventually. Gooch. Again, Cameron Smith's going top 10. Yeah, uh, Taylor Gooch. You got to feel pretty good about getting them for, for this kind of depreciated value. Yeah, and especially, I mean, I, I, I they're definitely a bucket that you can kind of lump them in. But to me, Neiman, guy's a legit. I mean, you can look oh. at... Just NH pain is just taking us to the woodshed. This is not enjoyable. Now we have to take like Justin Rose. Oh, do we really? No, nah, we, we don't Corey, have to. I would take Corey Connors. Personally. I would too. I think okay. and he's going to be a little bit different than what we have. That's um, all right. Yeah. Again, him and Sung Jae can both gain a ton with the irons from time to time. I love my guy Thigala. I just think that he's going a little bit. I, I think he's going to end up being just over owned compared to the other pieces that we're looking at here. Like, just in terms of his ADB, I think this is just a little bit too high. So I'm with you. I like the Connors yeah. play. Yeah, Corey Connors, again, we mentioned him at the tail end of the first draft about a guy that I, I kind of wanted to get exposure to in this format. 
because he, he can really, and he's represented himself really well at Augusta if we're just honing in on getting out of that mm-hmm. first pod. Yeah, first pod, he can definitely do some work there for you. I think he sets up well at pretty much all of the majors this year. A lot of iron player. heavy golf, uh, a lot of iron heavy golf when you get to that level and uh, in the majors for sure. Uh, something that can save your neck from time to time. But uh, this next one's going to be a difficult pick because Ricky Fowler, as it stands right now, he still has to win, I believe, a round of 16 match in order to get to the top 50 in the world. That might be a little bit of a big ask here, but um, you might not even have access to him at Augusta, whereas I know we're guaranteed to have Scott, Kepka, Hoagie, Rose. Like, I don't know if I want to embrace the uncertainty of just not having a golfer in at least one of the majors. Yeah, it's, it is tricky. It is that risk reward because again, not just to keep hammering home that format, not all your golfers need to do anything at Augusta. That's not necessary, but you're putting tremendous strain on your nine golfers now if one of them isn't even in the tournament. Yeah. Uh, hard to accumulate fantasy points if you're not playing, right? Yeah, no, that that makes it uh, quite difficult. You wanted him last. Did we draft Justin Rose last go around? I don't think no, we, we did. No, we did not. I think now we get your guy. This is, I like this. this. I was, this was, I was debating before. him and Connors. And really nice. to get both of them? Yeah. Oops. I think I took him. No, there he is. Draft. There we are. Uh, I feel really good about this. Is coming this together nice so far. Yeah. Again, Cantley, Spieth. You should like the teams. Like, again, there, there isn't such a wide pool that we're pulling from. There's no salary cap restrictions or anything. It's best available. So you should like your team. But I like I like the configuration of our teams. I, I do as well. Again, I mean, and this is where the beauty of being able to draft multiple times and kind of get those blends. And I will mention, I know you already did. If if you are coming in, make sure to get that first match deposit bonus. Uh, the link below. You want to take advantage of that because the reality is if you have a couple of different teams, say you really want Rom. Well, if, if you're unlucky and you don't get to pick first or second, you're never going to have access to him. So it is fun to maybe do a handful of these. And I know you and me are going to be doing plenty leading up to, the, to Augusta because uh, there's a lot of ways you can go here. I want to get a little bit exotic here on this next Uh-oh. one, mainly because I think he's starting to show flashes, and I think we want to be there in the event that he just takes off this summer. Do you know where I'm getting at? Minwoo Lee. That is exactly where I'm going with yeah. this one. This is the one bomber again, but he hits two iron everywhere when the when it gets tight. We saw it at the Players' Championship. Did it go very well? No, it did not, but... Overall driving, I think we're going to see him start to really take off. He did so in Europe at the beginning of this season. We started to see flashes, especially at that player's championship here. I think for major championship golf, he might just have the stuff where he's able to dig it out of some rough other dudes can't. Yeah, listen, he that guy's got a ton of talent. There's no doubt about it. I actually read a fascinating article uh, about some of him. Obviously, talented family. His sister's amazing as well. Um, and he has shown in the biggest events that he can play. So that's, a, this is a true boom bust pick. He could not be one of your top six in any major and it wouldn't shock me, but he's not going to be, uh, someone that I think is on a lot of people's minds at the same time. Might be going back on my word because Kurt Kitayama winning at Bay Hill guaranteed to be at the masters guaranteed Uh-oh. to play everywhere. Oh no. Now I'm conflicted. Minwoo or Kitayama? Yeah. All right, can't go back on my word. Maybe we can yeah. get Kitayama next. That would be fun. I, I think we can. We did that with Connors and, and Justin Rose. I appreciate how fast these people are drafting. Yeah, that is useful. Draft etiquette. It's very important. What are we doing with Tiger Woods other than not playing him? Uh, other than that, nothing. That that sums it up nicely. Let okay. other people... Listen, you get, you get a warm day, a warm set of days and stuff. I think he could be just fine, but you're... You're asking a lot, and I'm just not sure it's necessary. I'm not sure it is either. Um, Please come on, Kurt Kitty. I'm a fall to us again. Ricky Fowler, people are very aware, I think, uh, that we're drafting with that this might not be a guarantee for Augusta, whereas this is. So that's that's one component to it. Ricky Fowler had a really good start to the season. I wish I could just click on that name here this second, but I can't. No, but I, I do think in general, Ricky, Ricky is certainly draftable. I know you're not saying that. Uh, Correct. 
it's it's just there is some stuff outside his control and we don't know exactly oh look at this this is turning out really nicely sometimes the stars align and you get your guy around later again if i had missed out on kurt kiniyama would i be that bummed out no but i was able to just sit on my guy reach up a tiny bit for min Wu, who i definitely know would have gone earlier there and took a chance thinking people just think kurt kiniyama sucks when he does not yeah I mean, listen, that's a guy I've talked about this a lot. I really like my players getting experience on Sundays and these guys who go the Euro route. Yeah, they're not playing against the best of the best, but they're in the hunt rather than guys trying to eke out cuts over here. So you've seen that from Fratelli and Kitayama, Maybear and Higo. How many guys have won over there and then come over here? I like that strategy. All right. We have two picks left. Yes. This is going to get interesting because there's a lot of players that I like for PGA Tour golf that I don't like for major championship golf, that being Davis Riley, that being Taylor Moore. Um, I like them for PGA Tour golf. I don't know if I love them for the majors. Is there somebody that you really, really, oh, great, we just started. Do you have a burning desire anywhere in this range? I'm not going to say I do, but I, I think to me, Ryan Fox is a guy that really represents himself well in majors. He can really, he's got plenty of experience in Europe, obviously, and he's come over here and acclimated himself well in his stateside starts. I think he's the type of guy late round. He could be on the first page of a major leaderboard this year. I love the swing. Very compact. He's a player. Unique looking golf swing that he has going, but uh, usually when you have very few moving pieces, there's not a lot that can go wrong. I think Ryan Fox has the kind of golf game that's going to travel New Zealand, the Kiwis. I like him. That's right. That's right. Something like that. Little, little crocodile Dundee, except different country. <laughs> Same Other area. Than Other than that. Other than, yeah, I mean, they're they're close. Steven Adams they're season. Home. There's that. Yeah, New Zealand. Last pick. How anyway. weird do we want to get? Other than like. I, I want to take somebody that other people aren't clicking on. Where are we going okay. to go to get weird? Don't say Taylor Pendrith. I'm mad at him. Nice showing here at the uh, the old Corrales, my friend. Yeah. Um. So I don't think we need to get like. Like stupid. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Grio would be pretty stupid. Yeah, no, that that would classify as <laughs> real dumb because um, like. Patrick as much Reed. As if I he's there, we're taking Patrick Reed. How yeah. could you not take Patrick Reed in the last round? To. He's playing at Augusta too, and everything, and it just makes sense. He's in every major. This team is. I, I'm sure this is going to end in classic fashion when I say things like this. This team is stacked. It's absurd. Patrick Cantlay, Jordan Spieth, Sung J M, Tommy Fleetwood, Corey Connors, Justin Rose. Min Woo Lee, Kurt Kitayama, Ryan Fox, Patrick Reed. I also like some of the English slash international flair we have going because what matters the most when you get down to the end of it, the open championship. And that always has a plethora of different individuals who show up and just find ways, find ways to be very, very effective on those kind of tracks. Yeah. I mean, we've seen it from how Tong Lee popped up there once and, I believe Brandon Stone was like, these guys come out of nowhere. And although not all of them are going to be like logical draft points, we definitely have a handful of guys that I think uh, could really make some noise in this. And it's not to say we sacrificed Augusta because it's great to plan for the open. But if you don't get out of the first round, what good is it? And I think we've kind of got the best of both worlds there. All right. Here are two teams to finish it out once more. We got the Bombers. This is the bombs, the Bomba squad, if you will, right there. And then we've got kind of the all-around specialists, a nice blend of players, got some good ADPs, got to wait on a couple of pieces. I'm very happy about the work that we did here. Any other thoughts for the people as we get out of here, Ben, after do- accomplishing a couple of Albatross drafts, uh, drafts today? No, not at all. I mean, I really think that, again, the more you take advantage of what they've got going on at Underdog, this is a cool format that I think is really unsolved. Uh, I'll just quickly throw out if you have any questions. At Eric Lindquist on Twitter, at JazzRazDFS. We're going to be doing these drafts just like you guys. So if you ever have questions, of course, you're going to be seeing plenty of this Underdog content as the Masters gets closer and closer. Uh, Maybe one of us can make a run. That would be beautiful. That'd be fun. 
I will not be sharing, but I love you anyway. No. Underdog Fantasy, my friends. Use promo code STOCASTIC, S-T-O-K-A-S-T-I-C. Double your first deposit up to $100. Good stuff. They have the Albatross, $10. $250 for the long drive. Twenty dollars to first there, but hundred k to first to that $10. And then the $3, the warm-up. Get in a couple of those. Get your feet wet. Try it out if you don't want to just jump off the deep end right away. But telling you, 100k to first, just 56k entrance, 500k prizes, such a great payout structure, and not a ton of rate coming out of that. Just barely over 10%. That goes a long way for you as well. Ben, any final words for the people? No, as always, again, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you guys and stay tuned for many more drafts as we lead up. This has been fun. I like doing this and uh I'll talk to you guys soon. For Ben, I'm Eric Lindquist. We'll see you guys later.